I am a homebody. It comes naturally to me to enjoy being in a status quo place. Something I can rely on. I love the comfort zone. My comfort zone. Quiet, simple mornings with a cup of tea. The same routine day in and day out. Does this sound familiar to you? Do you love the comfort zone too? But I want to tell you something. Life is not best lived in the comfort zone. So let's back up for a minute. Sure, the comfort zone, it's comfortable, but it doesn't challenge us. It doesn't help us reach our potential. And most of all, it lies to us. It is terrible for telling you what to do with your life. For instance, walking is probably inside your comfort zone and running is outside of your comfort zone. All the comfort zone wants to do is keep you inside of it. If you always stay in the comfort zone, the borders get smaller and smaller. For instance, the longer that you grab fast food and never cook at home, the harder it is to break into cooking. It becomes easier and easier to just grab the food each time you are out. The comfort zone is a terrible guide for telling us what to do with our lives. We need a solution. We need a reliable guide to make decisions. I challenge you to ask yourself these questions today. What kind of person do you wanna be? What kind of skills do you wanna have? Making decisions based on these facts the comfort zone will start to grow larger and become more comfortable in time. Deciding what life you want to live and disregarding discomfort altogether will expand your potential with what you can do with your life. Vacation to me mixes up my routine and oftentimes can make me stressed. We try to still take trips with the boys because of course we know providing them opportunities is good for them. And once I get on vacation, that starts to become my normal and I feel content. So this year we booked the trip to Cedar Key, Florida. And what I didn't know when booking the Airbnb is that this trip would change me. We had recently started minimalizing our home and we were simplifying our life. I was getting into a good rhythm and really enjoying the slow pace of this new life we were creating. Then we packed up, we headed out early in the morning on a chilly Friday. The two day drive to Florida was long and as you can imagine with two little ones, it was challenging. We arrived to our destination and I had no clue or preconceived notion about Cedar Key, Florida. My aunt had been there and said it was a great place to check out. When we arrived, I was skeptical hearing that there were only 700 people on this tiny, tiny island that is Florida's second oldest town. Cedar Key is in north central Florida on the Gulf of Mexico. It's quaint and old fashioned, and what I would soon find out was the perfect place to continue our slow lifestyle. Cedar Key is short on traffic lights and long on relaxation. You can always find a good clam chowder, the people always smile and wave, and the most heartwarming coffee shop is always ready to greet you with a perfect seat to read and journal. Being that the whole island is roughly one mile of land, you can imagine how easy it is to walk it many times a day. I love walking and I find so much joy in just being outside and moving as much as possible, rain or shine. Cedar Key is a place that celebrates art, beauty and creativity. 
pelicans roam the shoreline and provide an endearing feel to the island. What stood out most though was the opportunity for community, a dying necessity in our culture. And I think this really goes into the comfort zone. We have become comfortable staying in and not being social. This trip really taught me that how you choose to live each day can always be taken with you, no matter where you are at any given moment. You can choose a busy vacation or a calm, slow vacation. You can choose to be only focused on yourself or branch out and build connections wherever you are. And that the sun always shines brightest in your life when you are positive and joyful, exactly where you are, no matter your circumstances. That branching out and stretching yourself, getting out of the comfort zone, provides the opportunity to give you a gift. You just have to be willing to be a little uncomfortable for a moment, to see the beauty in change and a new view. Let's embrace the idea that the more we subject ourselves to discomfort, the happier we are. Push yourself outside of your comfort zone, try new things, start new habits, stick with what you know is important to your well-being. I have noticed one really basic example of this is exercise. It's hard. It's outside of my comfort zone at times. But the benefit I have received from exercise, physically and mentally, is obviously beneficial and life-changing. And most importantly, just slow down and savor every single moment of every single day, no matter where you are. He takes it! I have found that in my life, through real estate, through getting married, through having children, there are so many ups and downs in life. And no matter what, we are forced at times to get out of our comfort zone. But a lot of the time, I think it's easy to just sit to just find comfort exactly where you are. I know for us, Rick has changed jobs many times through the years and through those job changes, we have had the biggest blessings and opportunities. And if he had not changed jobs, we would never have seen those. Life brings so many decisions. And I encourage you rather than sitting in the status quo to find opportunities. Push yourself, just try things and see what the outcome is. A lot of the times the things that we fear are actually things that will never come true. And taking that risk brings more blessings than we could ever imagine. 